Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are going to be taking a look at the War Story Panther Queen aka Shuri as Black Panther. Now I know this has happened in the comics before but as far as I'm aware, this is the first 1-6 scale version of Shuri in the Black Panther suit. So yeah, I can't wait to get this figure out here. Now I got mine from Comic Sanctorum, but do bear in mind, this is third party unlicensed, it's an unofficial product. I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is not a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. What we are going to do now though, is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art and it's relatively straightforward. An image of the figure herself right up here on the front, luxury edition down below at a very funky angle. I reckon the factory worker that stuck that on mine probably was nearing the end of their shift. Panther Queen on the side, another image of the figure, this time with the unmasked head sculpt on the back of the box. Now on the inside we do get another image of the figure, this time holding some massive blades, Panther Queen on the side, and the same thing on the back. There is still though one more image and it's on the inside. This is absolutely awesome, it showcases how poseable this figure hopefully will be. But we're not really here to dissect the box, we're more here to check out the figure inside. And first in-hand impressions are already pretty positive. If you've owned any other Toys era figures that wear these rubbery type suits, you kind of know what to expect with what this feels like in hand. What we are going to do now though is get all of her accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything she comes with. Here we have all the parts and pieces. Now starting off with the display base first, it is the usual Toys era rectangular style base. A purple concrete flooring image has been printed up top with this rough texture on the surface, a regular crotch grabber, and an absolute crime for a nameplate. It is a sticker, it's peeling on the edges and it's been applied crooked, plus Panther Queen is barely even legible. The text is far too dim, so at a distance it is quite hard to make out what that even says. Luckily most of the other accessories are really good. Starting off with these two sonic cannons. They do just attach to her wrist pegs via this rubbery tube, there is a wrist peg port on the inside, kind of like the Hot Toys ones. They are painted and detailed very nicely. They have panther faces up front and a nice vibrant purple in their mouths. It's a little bit hard to make out on camera, but take my word for it, it definitely is in there. You also get two bladed weapons. I really like the curved design here and the handle is curved as well. They are a little bit prickly so do be careful not to spike yourself. Now you can remove the bottom sections of the handles and bringing in this joiner piece you can join them together in any way that you'd like. You can have them facing the same way or going in alternate directions and I really like that, it's something different and something a little bit more dynamic. Speaking of dynamic, you only get two alternate hands. She comes with the gripping hands out of the box and then these super dynamic clawing hands. I like that the claws are painted in gold so it does match the aesthetics of the rest of her suit and the fingers are very nice and rubbery. But only two hands? Where are the closed fists? She in my opinion should have at the very least come with some closed fists. You also get this piece which attaches magnetically to her back. You use this to holster the blades and you will see that in just a second. Lastly, you do get two head sculpts with the deluxe or luxury edition. On the left we have an unmasked head sculpt 
and for me, this ain't it. It's a very soft looking sculpt, there isn't any texture at all to the skin, and it kind of comes across very orange. I get it, this is comic inspired, but for me it just doesn't cut the mustard. At the very least, the hair looks really good and it has been dry brushed to perfection, it's just the face that lets it down. Maybe I'm just spoiled because the Hot Toys Shuri head sculpt is so darn good. You also get a Black Panther helmet sculpt, and this is what I'm going to be using on mine. I really like the way it looks, it's very angular, and it's detailed to the nines. There is a ton of sculpted in texture, and it's also painted in a nice vibrant purple, just like the other accessories. What we are going to do now though, is get Shuri herself out here, and take a closer look. Here we have her standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And for the most part, yeah, I'm very happy. Is she perfect? No, she isn't. And we will get into why throughout the course of the rest of the video, but for now, she does check a lot of my boxes. Going into this, I wanted a very unique looking Black Panther figure for the display. And I'm pretty sure we can all agree that that's exactly what this is. It's Toys Era slash War Stories own design. They were able to go crazy with the aesthetics and that's exactly what they did. I love that they added a ton more purple into the outfit. They could have gone all black and I would have been perfectly fine with that and left the purple to be that weird UV paint that Hot Toys likes to use, but at the same time I'm glad they didn't do that. No weird special gimmicks, it just looks awesome right out of the box. What we are going to do now though is take her off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. Here we have her up close and personal. Now in just a second we will try out the unmasked head sculpt because I'm pretty curious to see what that looks like. Around back she does have her blades threaded through this harness piece which is attached magnetically. If from the front you think the look is slightly too busy with the handles and the blades poking out, you can very simply remove that and omit it entirely. I haven't quite decided as of yet which way I'm going to go in the display. Let me know what you think I should do down in the comments below. Now as for the helmet, I know we've already discussed it in the accessory segment, but it's worth talking about how it fits in proportion to the rest of the body. I think it looks great, it's not too big, it's not too small, and it sits at roughly the right height. The only complaint I have is that the gold for the eye lenses are a lot darker than the gold on the rest of the suit, and the purple sections are a lot more vibrant than the suit itself. But other than that, I think it looks awesome. Now if you want to make the neck look a little bit longer, which I'm tempted to do in my display, you can technically remove these rubbery necklaces. Plus they kind of cheapen the look anyway, so as I said, I'm definitely tempted to do that myself. Underneath the necklace though, you kind of have another one. It is just printed on the surface of the suit, but as you can see on the chest plate you can make out multiple of those silver teeth just like we saw in the MCU Black Panther movie, the suit extended out of that necklace so it's a very nice touch. I'm not sure how I feel about them just being printed on the surface around the sides, but this chest plate is a really bright silver and it does make her look a little bit more armoured up. She also has some Kamoyo beads, I'm pretty sure that's what they're supposed to be, around these straps on her biceps, and then a couple more silver panels down here as a belt. Now the suit itself, as you would expect, is this rubbery style material from head to toe. Now you might be worried that it can crease and degrade over time, and it's very possible, it technically could, but I've had a good run with these Toys Era style rubbery suits. We'll leave this arm bent while we talk about the detail, 
And when we come back to it, I fully expect there to be no creases at all. Which definitely isn't something that I could say about the Hot Toys Black Panther suits. Now, there is a ton of detail printed on the surface and multiple different sheens. The base layer is a matte black, then there's glossy black over the top. There is some gold, some silver, and of course, that very vibrant purple. But not quite as vibrant as up there on the helmet. Now, as I said, there is a ton of stuff to look at here, so when you get yours in hand, I wouldn't be surprised if, for a moment, you're overwhelmed by how much detail there really is. Coming down to the shoes, you might be thinking, what are those? But they look really cool. They're this sort of tech-inspired high-heeled shoe with these massive black panther claws around the front. They kind of give me Wolverine vibes with these little pieces that the claws would come out of. I don't know if these are comic book accurate in any way whatsoever, but they are totally awesome. Now, if you're wondering what she looks like wearing the unmasked head sculpt, it does just attach magnetically. Now, for me, this kind of ruins and cheapens the look. It does look very doll-like, as we discussed earlier. I'm not sure if this is based off a specific Black Panther comic book run, but for me, 9 times out of 10, if not 10 out of 10, I will be going with this helmet. As for our little experiment, if we unbend the arm, as you can see, there are no creases at all. This material is super sturdy, which is a good thing considering that most people I'm sure are picking up this figure to pose in the Hot Toys Wakandan throne. If you are wondering if you can use the MCU Shuri head sculpt on there, technically it can sit in place, but you are going to need to do some mods. Because the neck peg isn't magnetic, it simply won't attach. Also, if you do have the neck laces on, it kind of makes her look like she has no neck. When you remove it though, this looks awesome. I'm tempted to figure out some kind of way to get this head sculpt on there permanently, because I mean, this is a totally badass look for Shuri, and as we know, this might just be one of Hot Toys' best head sculpts to date. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the Panther Queen on the left and the Hot Toys Shuri on the right. And Houston, we may have a problem. Panther Queen is really tall. Now you could make the argument that she's wearing high heels and the Hot Toys version isn't, which is totally true, but the body itself is just far bigger. Now, for me, in my own headcanon, this works, because Shuri would have to be older and more experienced, hence potentially a little bit taller before she dons the Black Panther suit, so in my display this checks the box. But if it doesn't for you, I totally understand. Seeing these two standing together at first was a little bit jarring. At the very least, because she is so tall, she looks great standing alongside T'Challa. Now, it's going to have to be up to you to decide whether this is going in your MCU display or if it's going with your comic book figures. For me, it's MCU all the way. Even though we haven't seen this look yet, I could technically put it in the background of my Black Panther collection, kind of like a suit that Shuri has been tinkering with. Who knows, the possibilities are endless. Just going over articulation. Now, bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I am willing to go. Now, starting off with the head sculpt, as we've already discussed, it is on a magnet. But it's not on the good kind. What do I mean by saying that? Well, usually the magnet will be flat and then you can move the head sculpt around it. Because this one actually sits up inside the head sculpt, it kind of just springs back into the neutral position. It does, however, swivel side to side and also give you a little bit of pivot. The arms will go up to there. They will go forward and back on soft ratchets butterfly joint at the shoulder that also hinges up and down, swivel at the bicep, 
a double bend at the elbow that goes way past 90, plus a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. The torso will crunch forward at two joints, and it also goes back, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there before they kind of spring back down. They will go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend at the knee that goes pretty much the full way, and lastly, a double ball peg down here for the ankle. Just wrapping up on the war story Panther Queen, aka Shuri as the Black Panther. Now I'm going to cut right to the chase. This figure is great. Is it perfect? No, she doesn't come with a ton of stuff, including only one pair of interchangeable hands, which, let's be honest, is a real head-scratcher. The display base is really simple, the nameplate is absolutely awful, and the unmasked head sculpt is pretty lackluster as well. But other than that, the figure herself, the main event, if you will, is worth it. The suit is stunning, there is a ton of detail here, and by the sheer fact that we do have a Shuri Black Panther figure in 1-6 scale, trust me, this figure is going to draw the eye in the display. Now, if you do some mods, you could potentially be able to put the Hot Toy Shuri head sculpt on there, as I know some people are tempted to do. I've seen some pics online with it attached to the body properly, and it looks awesome. As it stands, though, still just fresh out of the box wearing the helmet, this is a badass looking figure. She does come with a couple of dope accessories that, yeah, I will be having her posed with in the display, but it still poses the question, where is this figure going to go? You could put her with your comic book based figures if you do have the Sideshow Avengers line, or you could put her with your MCU figures. For me, that's where she's going to go. I know, Shuri hasn't donned the Black Panther suit as of yet, but I'm sure at some point she will. If you wanted to, as I said earlier, you could just pop this suit in the background, kind of like a nice little easter egg of Shuri working on this suit, as her brother is still the Black Panther. Nevertheless, this figure ticks a lot of my boxes, but it's going to have to be up to you to decide if it ticks any of yours. As I said earlier, I got mine from Comic Sanctorum, but do bear in mind, it's third party, it's unlicensed, it's an unofficial product. I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is not a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. While you are down in the description, Check out the link to Six Scale Network, the Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.